Welcome to our short film about Jewish children on a national socialism and the kinder transports to England, using the example of Karl Hirschland. Jewish children on the national socialism. During the national socialist regime in Germany from 1933 and in Austria after 1938, children of Jewish background faced discrimination and persecution. Marian Kaplan highlights the exclusion of Jewish children from mainstream schools, leading many to attend Jewish schools due to quotas and ostracism. This increased their vulnerability to discrimination and violence in public life. Some children, like those in the kinder transport, experienced acute fear, prompting parents to seek emigration options, though often families couldn't stay together. While the courage of parents is recognized, most war researchers suggest insufficient acknowledgement of the bravery and sacrifice of children themselves. The lives of Jewish children was deeply affected by the rise of the Nazi regime. They were getting discriminated in schools and in public. Many of them got attacked on the streets. They got excluded from school trips and other activities, and soon they weren't allowed to visit public schools anymore. So what were the kinder transports and how did they come about? As you heard from my colleague, life for Jews in Germany was becoming increasingly difficult during the Nazi regime. A few days after the November pogroms, a group of influential Jews and Quakers met with British Prime Minister Chamberlain to convince him to take in children, at least temporarily. They promised to give each child a guaranteed sum of 50 pounds, to find them accommodation and to ensure that they received an education. On November 21st, 1938, the House of Commons approved the program. More than 10,000 children left Germany and other countries occupied by the German Reich between December 1938 and September 1939 to seek refuge in England. The idea was to reunite them with their families in a British mandate Palestine after the war. However, most of them never saw their families again. One of these 10,000 children was Karl Hirschland. He was the son of a wealthy Jewish banker in Essen. He went to our school in Bredeneim, Goetheschule. During his time here, he experienced exclusion and hostility both from his fellow students and teachers. His childhood was marked by anti-Semitic discrimination and his family house was largely destroyed by the SA and SS during the November program. The decision to try to get Karl to safety was immediately made after this event. His father was acquainted with the principal of a Jewish secondary school in Cologne, who had organized the immigration of his students by kindertransports to England. Karl was to join them. First, his older sister Margaret emigrated in the beginning of 1939, having found a job as a housemaid. Karl followed in May of 1939. He had to leave his whole family and everything behind, including his beloved German Shepherd. Only 13 years old, he left by train from Cologne and then by ferry from the Netherlands, carrying only a few belongings. According to his memoirs, he was anxious about his unknown future, but also happy to leave the chaos of Germany behind. Upon his arrival in England, he was first housed in a youth hostel in Ramsgate. Thanks to financing from his family in the U.S., he was then able to attend a private school in Midhurst, where he was housed by a teacher and his wife. After finishing school, he joined the British Army and changed his name to Charles Hennem. After the war, he went to study history and became a teacher and lecturer. His remaining family in Essen was deported to Theresienstadt. He never saw them again. We would like to conclude our film with this thought-provoking quote from the Talmud. Whoever saves a single soul is considered to have saved the whole world. Thank you for listening.